We are honored to have with us His Excellency Archbishop Marek Zuleski, the Apostolic Nuncio to Singapore, to grace us uh, with his keynote presentation. Your Excellency, please. Dear brothers and sisters, good morning again. Uh, I am very pleased to be with you this morning and thankful to the Archdiocesan Communication Office for organizing this uh, conference webinar session dedicated especially to increase the awareness of the importance of communications in our society, especially now when traditional ways of communication such as uh, personal encounters, meeting in person, liturgical celebrations, etc., are limited. So I thought to divide my presentation in uh, the following nine points. The first one is the theme of the message. God communicated the truth that Moses may tell his children and grandchildren. We know, dear brothers and sisters, that history is created by life. Our God, in certain moment of the history of salvation, communicated or revealed to Moses the meaning of all the signs and miracles that he himself did for his people. God communicated the truth and the, uh, the objective truth that Moses, representing if each of us, may tell his children and grandchildren. So we receive through Moses a message from God that we have to transmit to the next generations. This is the theme chosen by Pope Francis for 54th World Day of Social Communications which we will celebrate uh, tomorrow, 24 May 2020. By choosing this subject, taken from a passage in the book of Exodus, Pope Francis underlines how particularly precious is the patrimony of memory in communications. The book of Exodus, it's a biblical story in which God intervenes in the history of his people, in our history. When the slave children of Israel cry out to him, God listens and remembers his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Joseph. God's memory brings liberation from oppression through a series of signs and wonders. The Lord then reveals to Moses the meaning of all these signs. And I quote from the text of the Holy Father, the Moses received this message that you may tell in the hearing of your children and grandchildren what signs I have done among them, that you may know that I am the Lord. So Pope Francis has emphasized many times that there is no future without being rooted in history. He has helped us understand that memory is not to be considered as a static body, but more like a dynamic reality. It is by means of memory that stories, hopes, dreams, and experiences of one generation we pass on to another. In addition, tomorrow's World Communications Day reminds us that every story is born out of life from interacting with others. Communication, therefore, is called to connect memory with life, true stories. I repeat, this is very important, one of the main messages that Holy Father would like to, to transmit to us, that communication is called 
the due of the, the responsibility of communication is to connect memory with life through stories. This was the method which was utilized by our Lord Jesus Christ as well. Jesus used parables to communicate to us the vital power of the kingdom of God, leaving his audience free to accept these narratives and to apply them to themselves. The ability to change expresses how powerful a story is. Second point that uh, is entitled A Good Story Can Change Us for Better. An exemplary story possesses a transformation power. We experience this when we turn to the lives of the saints told true stories. The Holy Father recently touched on this point in speaking to the Holy See's Dicastery for Communication when he urged that the offered by testimony of the lives of the martyrs, saints, and many other ordinary Christians be communicated to the faithful. It is a responsibility of all Christians, but especially of men and women in the media industry. You should tell, you should communicate, dear brothers and sisters, to our children and youth the stories that will assist to transform them into sons and daughters of God. Once again, in the heart of the pontiff's message is the person and her or his relationships and innate ability to communicate. The Pope asks everyone, without exception, to make this talent bear fruit. This means that we have to use our ability to communicate as an instrument to build bridges, to unite and to share the beauty of being brothers and sisters in a moment of history marked by discord and division. Pope Francis says, I quote again from the, the message of the Holy Father, Human beings are story tellers. From childhood, we hunger for stories just as we hunger for food. Stories influence our lives, whether in the form of fairy tales, novels, films, songs, news, even with, if we do not always realize it. Often we decide what is right or wrong, based on characters and stories we have made our own. Stories leave their mark on us. They shape our convictions and our behavior. End of the quote. But my question is, which stories? Are all stories, all news, all movies or programs are good for us? All of them have positive message. And this is my third point, the wise and selective use of internet control of parents, mass media, and generally communications must be positive. The challenge and the negative impact of the internet and generally of the so-called mass media are well known to all of us. As we browse various social media platforms, what we see and read sometimes may frighten us. In our world, issues that separate us are often highlighted in the social media, especially concerning religious beliefs, political affiliation, education inequality, and lifestyles. Media should not promote violence and irresponsibility of our actions. In short, we have moral right 
to oppose this kind of behavior that increases the culture of death. From this point of view, the social medias could be a real diabolic instrument. Opposite, mass media and generally communication must be always positive. We should advocate for social media that promotes the beauty of life, hope, moral values, peace, truth, and respect. Point number four is about virtual online meetings. So, according my and uh, my personal view, and I think the official view of the church and the teaching of the church, virtual online meetings must be considered as an exception. They cannot be a substitute for actual physical interactions. The online meeting should not replace human and personal encounter. One can read stories of people who had the chance to encounter Jesus. This kind of personal encounter changed their lives. No, we have many examples in the Bible. For some, it was so important that he even remembered the exact time of meeting Jesus. I quote the Gospel of St. John, the vocation of the disciples. They ask, teacher, where do you stay? And Jesus replied, come and see. So, says the Gospel, they went, they saw, and remained with him. And then, the, who uh, tells the story added, it was about 4 p.m., 4 in the afternoon, 4 hours in the afternoon, exactly. So why the, the author, John, mentioned this small particular? Because it was very important for the people to meet Jesus personally. They were uh, impressed, they were shocked something that remained with them for the whole life. They remember even the exact time when they met Jesus. And this is what we call personal encounter. All of us, we're supposed to meet Jesus if we are truly his disciples. Let us take the issue of getting married online, no? Everyone today mm, talks about this. For us Catholics, obviously, is unacceptable. I don't make you now the theological and canon, uh, canon, um, canonic law uh, lesson, but I just tell two reasons why it's unacceptable. Because it is a sacrament. Uh, sacraments are uh, visible signs of an invisible reality. And the second reason, it means celebrating sacrament means a personal encounter with Jesus who is truly present. And then the second reason, uh, so-called online uh, marriage, it is also against the law and tradition in the Catholic Church. Point number five, it's about tolerance or known tolerance to false, offending human dignity and destructive stories. So we have to be clear, zero tolerance to all negative stories. Like, um, just share with you uh, the recent news from Europe, thanks God they arrested the author, but uh, was appearing a video game uh, on online um, addressed to youth and at the end of this was suggested to those who lose to inflict self-punishment and to commit suicide. Uh, think about how is possible that this kind of material goes online inviting our children, our youth, to commit suicide. Stories can help us understand and communicate who we are, because 
human beings are storytellers who need to be clothed, says the Pope, with stories to protect our lives. Pope Francis emphasizes this in his message for world. Yes, we need to be clothed with positive stories. Holy Father warns us against the temptation of the serpent, who is a liar. He told false stories, manipulating people as narrated in the book of the Genesis, which introduced into the fabric of history a not difficult to undo. His Holiness denounces also those stories that lull us, convincing us that we are happy, that we need to gain, we need to possess and consume. And taking up a theme very dear to our Holy Father, he stigmatizes the greed of chatter and gossip, which we may not even realize, as well as how much violence and falsehood we are consuming. The Pope urges all to react to this with courage and reject such treats. I quote again, amid today's many troubles, he says, we need stories that reveal who we truly are. Also in the untold heroism of everyday life. Point number six, Pope Francis invites us to be close to the Bible, to read the Bible because the sacred scriptures is a story of stories, is the best story we can tell. So the Pope's message mentions storytelling, a technique increasingly used in various fields from advertising to politics. But the story that Pope Francis thinks about does not follow the worldly logic. It's a different story. It's the story, that, story of the salvation that the Bible tells us. It has a deeper values that revives our memory of what we are in God's eyes. The Bible shows us a God who is both creator and narrator. And this God not only created us, but he also loves us. So he interacts with us. He communicates with us and he expects our replies, our answers. Pope Francis also invites us to be close to sacred scripture, to make it our own, reminding us that the Bible is thus the great love story between God and humanity. Number seven is about the positive story that none one of these non-human story is insignificant to God. Pope Francis turns his attention to the story of Jesus, which shows how God has taken man to heart and that for him, no human stories are insignificant. His Holiness cites some stories about the encounter between God's freedom and that of man. He uses examples of St. Augustine's confessions and the uh, brothers Karamazov story of Dostoevsky. He invites us to read the stories of the saints and to share those stories that have the fragrance of the gospel that each of us knows. Yeah, practically, dear brothers and sisters, the last point, communication must be characterized by the principle of participation and sharing. So we can conclude that communication is a mission. For the church, communication must be characterized by these uh, two things, participation and sharing. So we have to participate, we have to um, seriously follow all the issues of communication, 
and then we have to share them, not to keep them for ourselves only. It will only become truly effective when it is used as a means to witness to Christ. So we, like this conference, we didn't meet this morning to enjoy ourselves. It's our conference, any communication in our lives, in the church, in the society, becomes um, effective when it is witness to Christ. This participation makes us discover that we are in communion with one another through the Spirit. Therefore, as Christians, we are called to manifest that communion, which marks our identity as believers. So we can conclude that communication is our mission, and there is no investment that is too expensive or difficult to spread the word of God. In this task, Pope Francis said, one must have the courage to change, to never feel complacent, nor be discouraged, and to embrace the challenge of the future. To move ahead is not extinguish the memory, is not to extinguish the memory, not to cancel the memory of the past, but to keep the fire burning. This uh, last idea uh, I took from a journalist, Robert Gomez, about the effectiveness, about the mission of the church. And also I used some idea from the article of Alessandro Ghisotti, a very good Catholic journalist who did this both uh, person, they commented as well on the Pope's message in these days. Last point, the Holy Father concludes, uh, we, I will do the same, concludes his message with a prayer to the Blessed Virgin Mary, so that she can listen to our stories and cherish them. The Holy Father implores the Virgin Mary to untie the tangled knots in our life and help us build stories of peace, stories that point to the future. Thank you for your kind attention. Have a spiritually fruitful and blessed communication day that we should celebrate every day, not just once a year. Why? Because we communicate with God and with others every day, every hour, every instant of our life. I bestow on you the apostolic blessing.